hello and uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, back to this, the final event in a week of lectures and webinars to mark the 40th anniversary of the IGS. I'm John Krauss. I'm the IGS's Executive Director. Please note we're recording this so we can share it with members and, and non-members alike who were unable to make it to the live session. It's my pleasure now to introduce Mr. Sam Allen. Sam is the Director of the TRI Environmental Group a globally active independent geosynthetic laboratory and research services provider. His work over the past 35 years has involved significant interaction with public and private entities around the world, giving him a strong understanding of the needs in all regions for geosynthetics infrastructure and sustainability. Of course, Sam is well known to IGS members as their elected president for the period 2022 to 2026. And in fact, he served several terms on the IGS Council. He's chaired the Education Committee, co-chaired the Pan American Activities Committee, helped launch the Educate the Educators Program, chaired the Communications Committee, and if that's not enough, he's also an active member of the Sustainability Committee. And outside of the IGS, Sam volunteers his time for numerous industry-growing organizations. This session is called Ask the Officer, so if you have any questions or comments, please use the Q&A function, and I will put them to Sam. And John, what I'd like to do, uh, with your permission, I'd like to show just a, a quick presentation, just some thoughts to uh, maybe get the questions churning. Please and do. I can, I can share my screen. Can you see this? We can see that, yes. Okay, fantastic. I just wanted to... Uh, begin um, by thanking you, the uh, Elise, the, uh, all of the previous speakers this week uh, with their, um, their addresses, uh, with the capstone today with Dr. Giroux. I just think this has been a, a very, very nice uh, way to, to celebrate and mark our 40th year anniversary. So thank you to everybody. Of course, uh, back in that inception, there he is, Dr. Giroux in the middle there, uh, one, um, two, he talked about the the continuity of a third international uh, conference. Uh, there were three committees, uh, 10 chapters, and of course, look at us now. Uh, just amazing. Um, a global footprint of the IGS. We, we talk routinely, as you know, John, about places that we want to reach out to. We want to strengthen. Uh, we want more influence. And speaking of influence, we had looked at uh, very, very deliberately a very linear process of creating a four-year strategy uh, in that strategic uh, report uh, that explains what we're doing, why we're doing it, and the plans in front of us are in the strategy report, building on firm foundations. And certainly if uh, any members have not availed themselves of this it would be very nice to do. It, this really explains a lot of what is going on. And of course, previously this week, with this strategy, with the vision that we have, uh, I'm so proud of my fellow officers. You heard about the, uh, the goals of being influential from my vice president, Eduardo Zanoni, uh, our past president, uh, IGS past president, and current Fed IGS president, uh, about being the trusted um, go-to organization for all things geosynthetic. Laura Coboni, our, our gener uh, Secretary General, talked a, a great deal about diversity and how the IGS is dedicated to be representative of all our members, all of the voices that make up uh, the IGS. And then certainly our treasurer, uh, Dr. Jihan, uh, talked about um, being sustainable uh, so that we can look into all of these future challenges and all the future promises uh, on a firm uh, fiscal foundation and a firm um, stability uh, that the IGS deserves. I will tell you that in the context of leadership um, and living into these strategies, we're very, very active in uh, making sure that the IGS chapters themselves, these are the wheels of the car, these are really the the the, the structure of the IGS is about our chapters. Um, and so we wanna feed them. We wanna make sure that they're strong and thriving. We wanna produce for them. So a lot of our ongoing uh, projects are creating 
uh, elements and products and activities to give to those chapters because those are the those are the communities that will carry that message out uh, on behalf of the IGS. We want to make sure that um, that we're embracing our future by acknowledging our growth as with this firm foundation of a very strong and robust academic society. You've heard Dr. Giroux talk about it. We're evolving into a diverse professional society with a strong corporate backbone uh, and very much um, practicing engineers and installers, contractors, uh, folks that are encountering geosynthetics and very active with these materials in the creation of our future infrastructure. Um, we are posturing ourselves uh, and working to do more of that to aggressively respond to the challenges that you heard Dr. Giroux talk about. Uh, we know what these are and we uh, are working very, very diligently for these responses. And of course, we've just recently uh, completed at the 12th ICG some difficult but necessary decisions about um, the due structure, but moving beyond the due structure to possibly find other uh, revenue sources for the IGS to do all the things that, that people are asking us and certainly we want to do. Um, we are busy with some uh, key initiatives and uh, uh, the sustainability calculator was uh, daylighted in Rome, we are, uh, it's a wonderful uh, expression of the lower carbon footprint, uh, the life cycle analysis, the sustainable benefits of geosynthetics in specific to applications. Uh, that calculator is open for review by our members. If you uh, touch base with the IGS uh, office, uh, we can set you up for that. And we're currently working on uh, greater access, uh, negotiating with our partner in the calculator, One Click LCA, uh, to create a lot of accessibility uh, for use of this calculator. We have a uh, IGS handbook uh, that's being worked on by a subcontractor and some uh, some writers that are, have agreed uh, to write various uh, chapters. This is application driven because this is where the users are. They are using geosynthetics for infrastructure. And so this calculator is application driven. The handbook is application driven. And both of these uh, will turn into tools that will augment the professional development. And you heard uh, Dr. Giroux talk about this um, with the need for professional education. And of course, how do we know that we've been successful in this uh, professional education? We're looking currently at IGS certification or credentialing uh, that will um, that will mark uh, someone's educational journey uh, and understanding more about geosynthetics uh, and geotechnical engineering in the context of uh, geosynthetic use. And we, of course, you've you've known about, you've heard about Educate the Educators program. Now we are bookending that, if you will, with professional development uh, with regard to the practicing engineer, not the student, not the professor, but the professional that's out using uh, geosynthetics uh, right now. And then you heard from uh, Laura about our very big dedication to being representative, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, we are looking at that geo uh, Graphically, we are looking at that, uh, having more women involved in our society in leadership roles and uh, involved in um, conferences and keynote addresses. Uh, we're looking at uh, joint efforts with our sister societies. This is not only an IGS agenda, but across all the geoengineering societies. So we're working with them as well. And the council itself uh, continues to work on these issues Again, delivering for our IGS chapters, uh, liaisoning with our sister societies. We're, we're pondering uh, joint events, uh, joint conferences, perhaps. Um, we're looking at the corporate membership, the benefits to our corporate members. How do we um, magnify those? How do we evolve those? And perhaps different levels of corporate um, membership, corporate involvement, and the benefits that go with those different levels. 
And again, uh, we're looking at uh, non-dues related uh, revenue sources, the geosynthetic IGS products uh, development, like calculators, like handbooks, like short courses, things like that. So as you can see, we are very, very busy in the context of growing our society uh, in a perfect time for uh, celebrating a 40 year mark and, and looking uh, with great uh, anticipation to our future. And with that, John, I'll stop sharing and, uh, and certainly open the floor for questions. Thank, thank you, Sam. And uh, that, that was a terrific introduction. And we've got, uh, uh, we, we are open for questions. Um, at the moment, we've just got one more comment from Maria de Graças Gardoni over in Brazil saying thank you to Professor Giroux for continuing to teach all of us this wonderful, exciting, uh, wonderful engineering of geosynthetics. Congratulations on an excellent class. So uh, that's a comment there from, uh, uh, from Brazil. Anyone else that wishes to ask a question to Sam, you're very very welcome to, and uh, please just put them in the Q&A remarks. But Sam, what a week it's been. We've had speakers from China, from Korea, Japan, the UK, South Africa, Germany, and the US. We've just had JP Giroux speaking from France, which you were moderating. How are you feeling now that we've reached the end of this, this celebration week? Well, it's it's interesting, John. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm all in, right? So I'm uh, I'm very uh, proud of. Uh, of what we've assembled this week, and I kind of am sad that it's over. <laughs> I, uh, I've, I've been able to attend myself uh, most of uh, the uh, live presentations and uh, couldn't be prouder of, of everybody that presented. And, uh, you know, I it's not without notice that um, these are volunteers, right? These are people with very, very busy lives uh, with passion for the IGS and willing to share uh, step up and and uh, communicate with their fellow IGS members, and that's uh, such a gift of the IGS and such a a wonderful feature of our membership uh, that they're so willing to do that. So I'm very proud. I'm a little uh, sad that it's over, but uh, we'll have many opportunities to to go into the future. Wonderful, and it's not quite over yet because we've still got some questions to come. So somebody's um, sent a question on the Q and A box saying the following. Does the IGS intend to offer a commercial professional certification for designers who use geosynthetics? For example, something similar to what the ASCE offers, which is an elevated requirement for bridge designers and other global engineering organizations. Yeah, excellent question. Um, we are busy looking at this, and there's two, there's two or three features that um that we are looking at. One is that uh, you know a lot of the credentialing, if you will, um, whether it's professional development hours or CE units, is very regional. It's very uh, those kinds of requirements are set by engineering boards uh, differently in different regions and different countries. So the IGS can't can't do that, right? We can't replace that. But what we can do is we can offer professional development in the uh, context of geosynthetic engineering, and we can mark that education uh, by measuring the success of classes through exams. Um, we can give um, a, a credential associated with the class itself, a certification, if you will. Um, but I will tell you, we approach this with humility. There's people that are smarter than we are about these kinds of systems. We're talking um, uh, we may very well talk with a, a consultant that's in the business of these kinds of uh, education credentialing schemes. And, um, and so we're looking at this as an IGS council. We're getting people uh, that are very smart about this to talk to us about it as we go forward. But, but, but key to this is not, is not so much the certification. It's the educational effort uh, that's specific to professional development. And we're very dedicated to that. Thanks. And we've got another question come in from uh, Merez Jamey uh, over in the Middle East, I assume, because uh, Merez's question is, does the IGS have representative chapters in the Middle East? Um, we have an Egyptian um, uh, chapter uh, of the IGS. Um, the Middle East is a hotbed of geosynthetics activity. A lot of the polymeric supply uh, comes from the Middle East. We have a lot more to do in the Middle East 
Uh, so we have been looking at this. We've been um, uh, we've been interested. Uh, we have some ongoing conversations with some other uh, possible chapter locations there as from the IGS. Uh, but this is an ongoing conversation with ongoing opportunity. Um, and again, I'll say that uh, that the Middle East is is very much a, a relevant uh, global region of geosynthetics um, production products, uh, resins. Um, I, I failed to mention this during the diversity uh, conversation, but uh, for the first time ever, the IGS Council actually has um, on the council uh, a, a resin producer uh, and also a master batch producer. These are these are producers that um, create the raw materials from which geosynthetics are made, and that's been wonderful to have that. We continue uh, to want to do that. So um, we will uh, we will continue our conversations there. We are having conversations currently with Pakistan and Iran um, uh, that, that have chapters in, uh, in Egypt. So we're active in the Middle East, but we'd like to be more active as well. So yes, thank you for that question. And maybe Sam, you could just add a little bit about, you know, if, if someone's in a country in the Middle East where there isn't a chapter, but they'd still like to be involved with the IGS, what would be your advice to them? Well, reach out to uh, the office. Um, if, if you've got a, a critical mass of community uh, that's involved in your country that are very dedicated to, to, uh, to achieving a chapter, we'd love to hear from you. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, if it's a very small community, uh, we would encourage you to reach out to some of the local chapters to maybe have advice and counsel, uh, shared experience in terms of growing uh, the interest in your region, and of course, the IGS office and the council itself are are a, a big resource for you uh, to uh, to bounce off of and to get information from. So, but let us know. Don't don't hide. Let us know uh, what you're thinking and communicate with the office of the IGS, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. And there's a, a further question come in. Please keep the questions coming. The more, the better. Any comments as well are also welcome. Uh, this question uh, from an anonymous attendee is, I'm curious to know, with all the potential market opportunities for geosynthetics worldwide, how can we ensure we're not cannibalizing each other's opportunities, but enhancing and enriching opportunities for each other? What part can the IGS play in this? Ah, this that's a perfect question. Um, and I'd like to credit Dr. Giroux for actually making this in one of his uh, points. Um, the, the education is the answer here. It really is. It's, um, it's, you, it's having the users, the designers with geosynthetics, the policymakers regarding geosynthetics be educated about their use. And then this invitation to compare products or one product's better than another, um, it tends to be reduced in its power, right? The smarter we are, the more we are less susceptible to those kinds of narratives. Uh, I will also say that the IGS has a very, very strong tradition. It's the perfect platform uh, for this interplay between very important components of our industry, such as the manufacturing industry, the, the makers of these products, the producers of these products, the raw material providers, uh, the practicing engineer, uh, the, the, the installer, the contractor, uh, advertising and promoting the highest quality in the use of geosynthetics and its installation. Uh, uh, that robust conversation um, doesn't uh, allow a lot of space for um, negative narratives regarding one product versus another. So I hope I'm answering your question, but but I think education is the perfect platform uh, to uh, sort of quell that urge sometimes. And uh, the IGS is the perfect platform for that education. Thanks. Thank we've, we, we've got another question, but I'm just going to read out a couple of comments that have come in. Uh, Han Yong Jun, I assume probably in Korea, uh, uh, says how much he's appreciated the, uh, the uh, work of Dr. Giroux and his presentation. So thank you for that, Han Yong. Uh, Patricia Guerra Escobar uh, over in the UK. It's been a great week and a great celebration of the 40th anniversary. Many congratulations to all of the presenters and organizers. So thank you, Patricia. 
And now a question. It's another question from Mehrez Jamey. Uh, and uh, they're asking, does the IGS plan to reinforce its presence in Northern Africa to organize, for example, one of the next international conferences? It could be in Morocco or perhaps in Tunisia. What do you think about that, Sam? Well, um, perfect. I, I love to hear the enthusiasm. Uh, the IGS has um, uh, committees that are made up of geographical regions. We call them the, uh, the regional activity uh, committees. And uh, the African continent has a regional activity committee um, head by Jabalili, uh, wonderful um, all-in uh, IGS member of practicing engineer with Jones and Wagner, uh, so a very practical, uh, knowledgeable uh, geosynthetics engineer. And um, the, the perfect uh, mechanism for expression of that desire, a desire to bring a conference, uh, educate the educators event, a technical session from one of our technical committees uh, is, a, is a wonderful mechanism for that, is to, is to approach your regional activity uh, committee chair um, that if you don't know who that is, it's Jabalili for the African continent, but to get in touch with her, you might again go to the IGS office. Uh, Elise Oatman is our IGS uh, secretary um, and uh, and have that make that connection so that that conversation can begin. I will tell you that the um, the IGS council and the way we um, uh, govern our funds, is very related to plans. And each year we have a plan that, um, that looks at strategic regions where outreach is needed, um, where chapters need support, uh, those kinds of things. And a lot of those requests, a lot of those plans are developed by our regional activity chairs. So that's a wonderful conversation to have with them. Thank you. Well, Sam, you mentioned funding our initiatives. So now's a good time to put a question to you from Jacques Cote. How do you see the role of the IGS Foundation in assisting future initiatives of the IGS? Ah, well, first of all, let me acknowledge Jacques Cote as the chair of the IGS Foundation. Um, uh, the chair of the foundation was also very much the founder, uh, doing a lot of the elbow uh, grease work to uh, get the foundation established and started. For those who don't know, the IGS Foundation is a, uh, a non-profit, uh, separate organization from the IGS, but their, um, their singular goal in life is to raise funds from our geosynthetics industry and then fertilize strategically educational efforts. Uh, for example, they are providing some of the needed funding for the development of the IGS Handbook, uh, they provide lots of funding for students, for young members and uh, university students to attend these very important conferences. Um, the, the IGS Foundation, ever since its inception, has played a very vital role. Uh, my own company uh, at TRI is very proud to, uh, uh, to uh, donate uh, to the IGS Foundation. It's, it's that important in the context of the life of our industry. And um, they do a spectacular job of, um, of really promoting uh, geosynthetics and geosynthetics education uh, all over the world. So um, they have uh, their own website. Uh, they have a steering board that's very good uh, and uh, would encourage you to, if you can, uh, to become familiar with them and to donate to them uh, as you're able to help help their mission uh, of uh, geosynthetic industry education. Thanks. We've Thank got a comment. We, we have a comment in from Philip uh, Grinalprey. Uh, it's an interesting comment. You might want to respond to this, Sam, with your own thoughts. Uh, Philip says, thanks for the excellent webinars today. Really enjoyed and learned a lot, again, from J.P. Giroux, but also from the very dynamic leadership of the IGS. So a big compliment there to the, to the officers and the council. It is inspiring. I also like the proposed geo component after the geosynthetics and originally geotextiles. It's food for thought. So JP has really sparked a bit of a discussion there. Philip's responding to that. What do you make of this idea of maybe geosynthetics may be a term we need to change in the future, Sam? Well, I don't, my own thought is, well, we don't need to change the term geosynthetic, um, but I do, um, I think we need to be unafraid 
of uh, engineering materials in general, uh, you know, where they belong or under what umbrella they fall in terms of communities that work with them. Um, we should not be shy. We should not, we should not shrink from that and become, um, you know, build walls um, around a, a certain definition or things like that. But I do think the clarity of uh, differentiation will always be important. Um, so, uh, well, for example, we have uh, bioengineered nettings and erosion control uh, products, um, but you know, the, the, instead of a, a biaxial polypropylene netting, right? Because of the because of the issue with plastics um, under hydraulic stress and erosion control applications, that's going on here in the United States. But at the end of the day, the erosion control engineering aspect that design for erosion control is the same, right? So we're we're we we need to be careful that within our um, definitions that we're not creating barriers to use of products, right? To use of the appropriate highest quality use of geosynthetic products. So I think that's that's not a, a linear answer at all, but it's a uh, those are my thoughts. We have to we have to uh, keep uh, the faith in terms of our definitions because that allows us to communicate accurately. But let's not get in the way of innovation. Let's not get in the way of engineering, uh, successful engineering design. And um, and I think if we get too stuck uh, in defending a definition, sometimes we run that danger. So I hope that answers your question. And um, a comment here from David Shercliffe. Now, those of you listening earlier in the week, you may have heard David's webinar together with Kazia Zamara talking about sustainability. And David called on every member of the IGS to, to lead in getting the message out about sustainability. And David's comment today is that uh, he thinks that sustainability argument is the great unifier for our industry mm. to give a challenging message to the geotechnical world. So Sam, really interested to hear what you think about that. He's absolutely right. Um, this is... Um... This is a common denominator in the context that geosynthetics almost in every single application will have associated with it the bringing of a lower carbon footprint and also quite often um, uh, an economic benefit as well. Uh, so these are these are conversations that the IGS promotes and measures and um, and investigates. Uh, this is what the sustainability calculator does. Um, this is what uh, the handbook and many other things. I will also mention two other initiatives uh, going on. One is um, leaning on our standards organizations, our consensus built standards organization via ISO TC221 on geosynthetics and also ASTM International uh, Committee D35 on geosynthetics. There is precedent for them to work together um, on certain jointly published standards. And so uh, the IGS is uh, encouraging a technical report on the sustainable uh, benefits of geosynthetics, not published by the IGS, but published uh, by request of the IGS uh, by ASTM International and ISO in the ISO format, that is. Um, and then we're also, uh, the IGS is also working with uh, some of our lobbying organizations in our industry, such as the GMA, uh, the Geosynthetic um, uh, Manufacturers Association and the kind of U.S. centric, and then the EAGM and and Europe uh, made up a lot of European manufacturers. Uh, Abent, which is a Brazilian uh, geosynthetic manufacturing uh, organization, liaisoning with them to work together to uh, put some uh, measurements uh, behind uh, some of the aspects of uh, sustainability benefits, but also. Um, leaching uh, materials that would leach out of or microplastic uh, uh, aspects of geosynthetics. So we're, we're work we're busy getting answers to support um, this conversation. J JP referenced it, right? We can't just say it. We need to measure it. Uh, we need to present uh, fact, factual information. So the IGS is very busy in um, robust conversations about these aspects of sustainability. Uh, that intriguing question uh, brought up by JP, uh, you know, maybe we don't need, uh, maybe the end of life is before the degradation of the geosynthetic. 
Um, how can it be removed? What about recycling? All of those things are questions that, um, that we need to answer as an industry. Curiously, um, geosynthetics many, in many service life applications have not had an opportunity to be recycled yet because they're still busy uh, serving their design function. So, um, so anyway, uh, robust conversation. David uh, Shercliffe is a big leader, um, did a wonderful presentation earlier this week. Uh, he's a big leader in the sustainability conversation uh, and the IGS appreciates his work. And he's exactly right. This is the common denominator across all products, across all disciplines, all applications of geosynthetics. Thank you, David. And we still got time for more questions and comments. So please do take the opportunity in the next few minutes. Sam, you were talking a lot there about how busy we are, how much activities we've got underway, everything that's planned. But how do you find time to do your job as president? What what does what does a day for the IGS president look like typically? Well, you know, thank you, John. It's um it's it's a long day, but it's a good day. Uh this is a this is a love of life, right? Um uh I, uh, I'm all in uh, to this. Uh, this is my industry, and I care a lot for it. Uh, it usually starts early, and unfortunately, uh, fortunately, I am uh, uh, spend when I'm home. I'm in the West, and so I can start very early and um, have meetings with you in the UK and uh, IGS council members and uh, different people from around the world. Our Europeans are like you are very happy because it's the middle of your day. And uh, our past president, Chun Sik Yu, is um, usually has a, you know, a, a beverage in his hand to, in the evening <laughs> sometimes. And then um, that's the first half of my day is really IGS business. Sometimes that leaks into early afternoon, but then I do have a job and I have some responsibilities and I switch the, um, the, the switch, uh, flip the switch a little bit in the early afternoon and pay attention to uh, uh, to TRI Global uh, in the afternoon and in the early evening. But but I it it works pretty well. Of course, there's lots of ex exceptions to that. Um, but you know that secret, John, where it's not really a job if you love what you're doing. Uh, I certainly live live into that quite a bit. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great phrase you use. And Javalides has commented, Sam, you call it a labor of love. I call it unwavering commitment and tireless effort. Thanks for all you do. Congratulations to the IGS on this milestone anniversary. And uh, Han Yong, who asked a question earlier, has also said, sincerely congratulate the IGS 40th anniversary. Best wishes to President Sam Allen and to all of the executives. So um, a lot of uh, resonance there. The um, I suppose one thing that we've we've talked about, listening to what JP was saying and what we said in this session, it's a lot about how the industry is changing and how the technology is changing and what the future might hold. What about membership? You know, how might membership change in the future? You know, we we've had a a successful membership for these forty years. Is is it going to stay the same for the next forty years, or how do you see that evolving? Well, I certainly hope it won't stay the same. I hope I hope that it grows. And I think part of the answer to that growth is um, is some of the initiatives that we have, right? Uh, especially with regard to education. Um, as more and more practicing engineers acknowledge or lean into the fact that it's very hard to do state of the practice in any, in building a road and building a reinforced soil structure and containing waste and preserving or conveying or storing water without the use of geosynthetics, right? It's very difficult to do that, ignoring geosynthetics. I think they are they will be attracted to these professional development courses. And of course, those will be offered um, preferentially to members or, or at least attract uh, IGS membership as a function of attending one of those courses through a, an economic scheme or a, a funding scheme. So I think um, there are lots of opportunities for our chapters uh, to uh, lay out some of these things, uh, calculators, handbooks, uh, courses. And I think those things are not really completely doing their job unless we raise consciousness of the IGS and grow its membership. Um, also looking at um, co our corporate members are varied, right? There's some corporate members that do a lot of different things, including geosynthetics. 
There's other corporate members that all they do uh, involves geosynthetics and the conversation that they need to have with the mining industry, with the energy sector, uh, with the sustainability uh, uh, conversations that go on. Those need to be fostered and encouraged uh, using the platform of the IGS. And I think uh, when we are doing those things, when we are exercising that uh, skill set or that opportunity successfully, uh, that will result in IGS membership as well. So, uh, no, we're we're not still. We we need to grow membership, and um, but I think there has to be a reason to join, right? There has to be a benefit uh, of involving yourself with the International Geosynthetic Society, and so we're busy uh, building that benefit and um, and we'll go out and uh, use those benefits to attract members. Thanks. And Enya Palmer has commented, congratulations to the IGS. And David Shercliffe has just added another comment. If geosynthetics did not exist right now, the world would be in a mess. For example, just think of landfills. So uh, good points there. Um, just a, a request from Boyd Ramsey. Um, he, he's interested in hearing your comments on uh, renewal, if that's the right word, of our connections in China. There was a, a large contingent, uh, as we know, that came over to Rome for the ICG in September. Um, will the Chinese chapter be the largest one in the future? And what, what are your thoughts on that, Sam? I hope so, Boyd. <laughs> uh, Boyd is referencing a very successful 12th uh, international conference on geosynthetics where uh, Jihan, my, my uh, treasurer, Jihan, and I uh, in 2022, um, pilgrimaged to China and met uh, the different um, um, organizations associated with geosynthetics, geosynthetics technology in China. China is a robust uh, user of geosynthetics. Uh, we all are aware of their uh, huge, um, very significant infrastructure projects through the last several years. Um, and we invited them to come to Rome and share that story. There was a special session on the Chinese experience with uh, geosynthetic materials. Wonderfully attended, wonderfully received. And um, we also, the officers met with the, uh, the leadership of the IGS uh, uh, Chinese uh, group uh, in Rome in a closed door meeting and uh, had a lot of um, requests from each other, right? Uh, their request uh, and their interest was in some of the products that we're developing. Uh, and our request to them was uh, grow your membership, grow your grow your participation and your involvement within the IGS. So uh, Boyd, I think we're on the right track with um, that part of our IGS community. Uh, we will be back in China in 2024. And um, in addition to that, we will be in India uh, quite a bit, another big user and big uh, environment for geosynthetic engineering uh, in application. So um, so specific to China, I think we're on the right track and we're doing the right things. And uh, they're very enthusiastic about sort of recharging uh, their relationship and their involvement uh, within the IGS. I think you'd agree with that, John, uh, after that meeting in Rome. Yeah, I mean, it was a great meeting in Rome, very positive, um, lots of initiatives that we can take forward. Um, and I think listening to um, uh, Dr. Liu's presentation early this week, the, the, the activity in China, the opportunity for China and the, the interest in China for interacting internationally is, is so so great that we can, we can really make something of that. I suppose what, one thing that people might be thinking about listening to this is, is that um, there are great opportunities and lots of success stories, but there is also a few parts of the world where chapters perhaps are, are struggling a little bit. We have we do have a few chapters that aren't as big and as active as we'd like. And I wonder, Sam, what would be your views on how we can help those chapters where where the activity isn't quite yet at the level that uh, that we'd like it to be? Great question, John. Um, we have two or three arms of outreach, right? One is... Um... Uh, being led by uh, our vice president, Eduardo Zanoni, who is actively engaging with the regional activity chairs, again, to identify those at-risk uh, chapters. And what I mean by at-risk is very limited um, membership, very limited communication to the IGS, uh, maybe some funding challenges with uh, regard to their finances, 
uh, those kinds of issues. So how can we help them? The first thing we can do is identify them. Uh, we have an ambassador program. Uh, that's the second arm uh, where we're allowed to, um, to maybe fund a visitor to that chapter to meet with the existing leadership, talk about the future, maybe encourage additional leadership. Uh, the, the, what, what, what are their needs? How can we help fulfill their needs? And then the third arm, of course, is with our ongoing initiatives. Um, these are not, they, the handbook doesn't belong to the IGS. The handbook is being made for the chapters. Uh, the calculator doesn't, is not a council um, object. It's a, it's a, a global uh, IGS chapter driven tool. Uh, and these professional development courses will be driven down to uh, the chapters and produced by the chapters, just like the chapters produce the Educate the Educators event. So we're, we are giving them tools to uh, to be to exercise and to grow their relevance in their region. Um, we are we have ambassador programs, and of course, we have a very deliberate uh, working group with our vice president, with our regional activity chairs that identify these at risk chapters and try to give them the resources they need um, to um, and the information they need. Um, sometimes that information is in. Um, and, and sort of um, adopting of a at-risk chapter by a successful chapter, right? So that uh, they can share what's worked for them and why they're successful and what, what, what perhaps a time when they weren't as successful, what did they do uh, to fix that? So uh, adoption and, and uh, help in that regard is also something we're busy with through, through that group of regional activity chairs. So a uh, great question, thank you. Thanks. Uh, now, there's no more questions to come through on the Q&A, so we'll wrap it up in a couple of moments. And, and I'm going to ask you in a moment for your any any concluding remarks. But I've got one last question, which is um, looking forward to you know the full period of your four years as president. At the end of that, when you look back, what will what will success look like? Ah, oh, that's a. Good, I've heard you ask another officer that. <laughs> that's that's a good question. I think really, you know, it's an arc. Everything's an arc, and um, I'm just on. Uh, I've I've got a little borrowed time right now, right? To to uh, to initiate some things, but I think I think success for the IGS has always been um, the successful um, outreach to the infrastructure community, the practicing engineer, uh, the, the uh, contractor, the installer, the manufacturer, this community that is using geosynthetics to promote their proper use, uh, to promote the discipline uh, of geosynthetics engineering um, that goes with geotechnical engineering. Um, and my, my view of success looks like more tools to do that mission, right? So we want we want professional development. We we've, we've never had an IGS handbook. Why don't we have a geosynthetics handbook? Let's get that done. Um, let's get this calculator done, and it's done, right? So we've got a sustainability calculator. So turning those things into fruit uh, tools that magnify our communication to the world uh, regarding the the significant benefits of geosynthetics is our mission. And uh, the proper use, the highest quality uh, use of geosynthetics in this very specific discipline. So that's what success looks like to me. And um, we're look, looking forward to it to keep to keep going. Thanks. And I just there's one last comment from uh, this is from Pedro Becker in Germany. Greetings from Germany. Congratulations, IGS and everyone involved. Very educational. Thank you all. So thank you, Pedro, for those those comments. Thank kind you, Pedro. So, uh, and Francesco Fontana very quickly has come in to say, well done, Sam and co. So uh, thank you, Francesco. So Sam, just to wrap up this week, any closing comments you, you'd like to share with everyone? Well, I'll start just with a, uh, a another um, sincere, uh, you know, just heartfelt gratitude uh, for one of our founders, <laughs> JP Giroux, uh, for um, contending with health issues and working so hard to get better to share a very special morning, uh, afternoon, evening with uh, IGS members from around the world. Thank you, sir. Uh, sincerely, thank you. Uh, that was just spectacular. 
I think we all agree um, that you have, uh, again, reminded us of who we are uh, and pointed to our future quite elegantly and uh, with specificity. So thank you for that. I couldn't, couldn't think of a better way to wrap up this week, quite honestly. Um, that what I would say, John, is that um, that geosynthetics, uh, you know, we're, we're the only geoengineering society that's uh, material centric. And it's very, very, J JP told us why we are that uh, today um, with all the benefits and the specificity uh, of geosynthetics that, that uh, and differentiation between geosynthetics and soils that so elegantly put. Um, I think the, the future is bright. Uh, we do have lots of challenges and I'm aware that the IGS uh, needs to grow and continue to evolve uh, to be responsive, successfully responsive to all of these opportunities, all of these challenges, and we are busy at work doing that. Um, I wanna thank uh, all of the presenters this week. They were just exquisitely good. They really were, uh, and they're, they're using their own time to do this. So I, I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, and I'm so glad, glad that uh, we have recorded this so these can, all these sessions can live on and affect uh, uh, the, the uh, listeners and the people that, are op that have opportunities to view these videos uh, into the future. So with that, I'll, I'll thank everybody and uh, look forward to working with everybody uh, going forward. Thank you. And thank you to you, Sam. Thanks to everyone that's participated today and all week for all of your questions and contributions. That wraps up an unforgettable week of sessions to mark our 40th anniversary, celebrating great thinking and insights from our diverse membership around the world. As Sam mentioned, we have recorded all the sessions and we will share them through our communications channels. So please do look out for those, watch them again and share them widely. Thank you again. And for now, goodbye.